Good morning, everyone. My name is Mike Baruch. I'm a principal data scientist in Verizon supply chain team. Um, Verizon Global Supply Chain is actually a team of high-performing individuals tasked to, to provide um, and deliver the world-class customer service to our all of our customers, including you guys sitting here in this room. Um, our team, Business Intelligence and Analytics, engages in different ways throughout the organization and um, help leveraging different type of analytics and um, providing any type of help that um, can transform our traditional processes into more data-oriented and um, 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 uh, intelligent uh, uh, approaches. We put together um, an animation of how our team engages with you guys as a customer to deliver this um, experience. This is green grasses, children playing in the background, so you guys, but for us in our headquarters at Baskin Ridge, New Jersey, we engage with our teams and we start discussing different things that we can do to help um, you guys have a better experience. Of course, whatever we do here translates into some sort of deliverables and KPIs. It's coded within our systems and then um, gets translated in some sort of action items which our engineers and um, technicians implement in our towers. Um, of course, Verizon is a very large company. We have about um, 1,600 stores nationwide. Um, we have about 150,000 VTMers helping you guys have a good customer experience. We have about 47,000 suppliers, which we accrue um, about $100 billion worth of spend with them. Our work is actually about this. Um, we try to leverage different type of analytics to make sure Verizon has a proper mix of suppliers to be able to provide this customer experience to you guys. Um, if you aggregate um, spend that you have with the suppliers and sort them, what you will end up, and this is just an example that I put, what you will end up is something like this graph. Of course, these are your larger suppliers that we call them head spend. And whatever that is not, of course, head is a tail spend supplier. Um, the suppliers at the head, um, these are the suppliers that you make a strategic partnership with them. These guys are. Their money is your money, your money is their money. Um, the problem usually appears on this side, that you have a very, very long tail of suppliers providing you with um, um, goods and services that you need to run that network that we have. Now, um, th this tail um, itself has another, uh, has some opportunities. It provides some opportunities to us. If, they are, if these guys are that bad, then why do we have them? There should be a reason for us to have it. Um, they reduce supply risk. They provide competition on the pricing, as well as um, sometimes the suppliers that we have, they're not presented in a region that we want in some part of the uh, country. So we use these guys to basically um, do what we want to do. On the other hand, um, they introduce also challenges. Some of these challenges are, um, I listed them below. There is a limited governance on those. Uh, sometimes we don't even have a contract with them. Um, um, they have a m limited market share, and of course, um, there is always, always a risk whether they are reliable, fulfilling their commitment to us or not. So the focus of this work is actually on reducing the tail to the right number. Um, in order for us to actually leverage the analytics, of course, we need to have different, um, it always starts with data. Uh, we have both internal data and external data. The uniqueness of this work is we use both. Um, our internal data is like POs, invoices, and the supplier profiles that we create. Um, um, and it is all, most of the time, unstructured. Um, that being said, we need to structure this data in order to build any other models that we want to do. We leverage it nat natural language processing and um, artificial neural networks to basically clean up this data, structure it in order for us to, to use it. And then um, we also blend it with external resources. There are other companies like Duns and Bradstreet, Rapid Rating, and Axiom, which one of them provide different type of data that um, you can use to strengthen your uh, data models. Once we have all of these, unfortunately, the dimensions of this supplier attribute matrix increases in such a way that um, 
most of the um, um, machine learning algorithms fail to solve it in uh, polynomial time. So we did some dimensionality reduction, and on top of that, we did some clustering. Now, once we have the clustering, we start applying the optimization model, scoring these suppliers, figuring out which one do we need to keep, which one do we need to get rid of, comparing them with their uh, peers. And then um, when we were doing this, we ran into like a, a very interesting issue that when our category sourcing managers, they wanted to look into their own suppliers, they were all very sensitive. There were, there were like, a lot of emotions involved into that. So that being said, we need to provide it another, let's say, um, um, data-oriented um, kind of like metric for them to take the emotions out and make the best decision for them. That's where we apply Topsys and Shannon Entropy. Of course, everything is simulated real time to uh, different dashboards and uh, through advanced simulations. And I will um, walk you guys through um, um, each one of these models. So uh, starting from structuring the um, um, unstructured data, very, very large scale, multiple year, year over year, transaction level um, PO and um, invoice data sets that we have. And of course, the majority of time, depending on the ERP system that you are using, there might be some mismatches between very important um, data points. For example, um, the part numbers sometimes they are missing. Or maybe the part numbers they don't match because one of them has an extra character for the other, depending on the year process. So um, we use, like, just like I said, natural language processing. We parse the part numbers, uh, part descriptions. We figure out which important part uh, of that part number we can map back to our um, data references. And um, at the end of the day, we basically figure out what is the correct part number and uh, OEM number for um, um, uh, the, the, the actual uh, invoice line that we have. Now, once we have this, we can start blending it with the external data set. And I put just some of the examples on, on what type of data we fed into this, this model. Um, you, you can see like the, the, the external ones are very interesting, like the number of industry, like uh, the external data sources provide uh, more visibility than we had within our internal data set. Now, um, for this example that I'm showing you guys, we had about uh, 550 different attributes. If you start building the combinatorics, like a combination of these attributes, uh, combining more than one of these features, for example, um, Verizon uh, as a supplier uh, is presented in New Jersey and provides wireless services, we can easily see the combinatorics increases, like this matrix increases, very, very, and also it is sparse. Um, for, for, for us, in order to start working with this, we need to do something with it. Now, there are some, um, this is basically our search space. There are some algorithms that you can reduce um, your search space or even generate these in, in a smart way. Uh, but for now, we just let's, let's say this is our search space. That multiplied by the number of suppliers that we are studying, that will become the input matrix to machine learning. Um, we applied the mix principal component analysis to basically reduce that dimensionality to into like five components. There are different algorithms that can help you figure out what's the optimal number of these clusters. And uh, usually within the, the first two components or within the, you, you can cover a lot of good, good variance. So in this case, in the, this example that we put here, it's about 73%. Um, so now, once we cluster these suppliers into uh, uh, these clusters, based on their business attributes, it's, it becomes easier for us to start studying which one of these suppliers, and for now on, I'm going to focus on the blue cluster, we can keep, we or we should keep, and which one of them we should get rid of. Probably the ones that are performing really well. And performance here means at least two things. One is pricing, cost per unit of products and resources that, uh, uh, services that we buy from them. And the second one is whether they are able to provide it in a high quality way, translated into some KPI. So whether they have high KPIs or not. Um, data envelope and analysis is actually a tool that we use for this one. Um, let's calculate the score between zero and one. And zero will be if a supplier is efficient in compared to their peers, providing us with resources and um, and products um, versus their peers. Um, and anything less than one, that means they're not efficient in that category. So if you solve this optimization model, you will end up with what we call um, scoring matrix. Each column is a supplier, and each row is a category. And the score of e efficiency is actually what we calculated out of this. So it kind of like evaluates and shows how efficient you are in, compared to your peers, providing that 
category pro product or services to us. Now, unfortunately, the number of categories can increase. The number of suppliers, of course, can increase. You cannot put this matrix in front of any uh, category sourcing manager and ask them make a decision. They're like, they're going to be like, well, which one do I need to choose? It's not going to work really well. So we need to come up with a better strategy to basically use the result of these metrics. That's where actually Topsys kicks in. Um, this approach that we use um, uses both um, existing transactions to calculate the weight metrics. So in this case, we take the emotions of category sourcing managers out of the conversation. And then um, it takes also some of the constraints, for example, very, very hard constraints that um, we don't want the lead time delivery of these products in this region be more than 50 days. So we apply all of those, we recalculate the, uh, the score of efficiency, and we come up with this ranking. Now, you, you, you can see different scores get transferred into different supplier spend. So spend is not necessarily the reason that we ended up um, with this ranking. Now, for our category sourcing managers, it is very easy to look into this list and start looking at the suppliers on the bottom, and then um, start making phone calls and see if we can rationalize this supplier and move the volume to somebody else. Negotiations gets involved, contract management gets involved, a lot of um, business activities get involved. So uh, now, it is great that we have this. Question is, okay, let's say if I rationalize supplier 22, who within my network is going to take over that uh, volume? And whether this transition has a positive financial impact or not. So what we ended up creating was um, this matrix called alternative supplier matrix on the uh, x-axis you see rationalization candidates. These are suppliers that we want to rationalize. And on the y-axis, of course, are alternatives. So green means there is a positive impact. So if you rationalize supplier 22 with any of these suppliers that are green, that means it's a good, good thing to do. Go do it. Um, we also ran into very interesting uh, business problem, uh, calculating the baseline for a product like price. Um, prices usually change through a time. They are subject to negotiation. So we need to come up with a heuristic that basically helps us calculate the baseline price for an item. And then um, we actually use this, uh, the result of this into our um, negotiations with our suppliers actually in Q4 for um, uh, 5G and some of the 4G stuff. Um, the full financial benefits, multi-million dollars, going to kick in after we roll it out to as many suppliers and categories as we can. Also, the result has been um, patented this week, actually, uh, with US Patent Office, so we're going to get a patent of this one. Um, we also have um, high-quality real-time dashboards, as I mentioned at the beginning, for different type of audiences. Um, business audiences, um, they have their own features. Executives, they, they, they like to see their own things. And of course, category sourcing managers, they want to do their own thing. So you can see some of the examples that I put here. Um, um, even for before and after rationalization, we can figure out what's the um, baseline price before the rationalization and what was it after it. So in this case, we can make a decision whether this rationalization was um, effective or not. Um, that being said, um, it's not any good if I talk about the impact and the, the stuff that we have done. I think it's better for us to listen to our stakeholders and our leaders about the impact of this work and why. Innovation is at the core of what we do here at Verizon. We're a group of individuals tasked with creating great customer experiences, transformation, and leveraging new technologies. As we progress with the transformation of 5G and fiber optics and how we deliver value to our customers, it's more important than ever that we apply the learnings of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and optimization to the way we do business and set our strategies going forward. The capabilities our team has given us through the use of machine learning, artificial intelligence, and optimization have given us a tremendous amount of information through data sets we'd never be able to do on our own. Helping us do supplier segmentation, supplier analytics on thousands and thousands of data points so that we can do appropriate supplier segmentation and then manage that with our supplier contracts. This information gives us tremendous negotiating power with our suppliers. Lots of teams within Verizon, engineers, computer scientists, supply chain specialists, come together to make it happen on a daily basis, and they continue to build innovative solutions for us to build the future. This innovative solution that we're talking about here is one of the best I have come across, which leverages 
artificial intelligence, machine learning, and optimization to generate very useful insights and intelligence out of unstructured data that enables us to make very good business decisions. The one thing we do know going forward, and the one thing we applied for, is the ability to do this on a repetitive basis and make sure that all of our business dealings follow through an analytics and business intelligence approach. The work that would have taken our teams weeks to complete was done in days using these analytic processes. And not only were we able to leverage that in time, we were able to leverage that in saving multi-millions of dollars in spend. We also like to thank the Infos community as well as our coach, Lana, who's not here, for the help that you guys provided for us and the opportunity. Also, former Ryzen employees who led involved into this one. That being said, thank you so much. <laughs>